In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the front lower control arm bushings on this Toyota 4Runner. Let's get started. To start, let's remove the wheel. Typically, you'll have a 21 millimeter lug nut, but these are not factory wheels, so for me, I'm going to use a 19 millimeter. Regardless of your size, remove all six of your lug nuts, and then we'll remove the wheel. With a 19 millimeter wrench, hold the bolt that bolts the strut onto the bottom of the control arm here, and then a 19 millimeter socket on the nut side. Break this free and remove it. Okay, there's gonna be a washer here. Take that off. Also, make sure that this bolt spins freely. If it doesn't, that means it's seized inside the bushing of the strut here. Regardless, you're gonna to wanna to take a hammer and tap it out that way. Okay. There we go, take it out the other side. Next, we have to remove the lower mounting nut for the sway bar link off the control arm. If you still have your original one, it's gonna be a 17 millimeter. For me, it's an 18. Take this off. Now let's remove the upper nut. A lot of times these break. Mine is fairly new, so I know it won't, but hopefully yours doesn't either. 17 millimeter socket. Take this off and then separate the bushings. Now you can pry this out and down, set this aside. At this point, we need to loosen up the steering rack to get access to the rearward bolt for the control arm because this is going to be in the way. So on the passenger side, you'll have two 19 millimeter fasteners, a nut at the bottom, and a bolt at the top. This should now slide off. Might need to pry it a little bit. Perfect, set this aside. If your bushing comes off, take it off. If not, just leave it here. This sleeve right here is shorter, which is the top one, than this lower one, which is a little bit longer that goes over the stud. So keep that in mind when you install it. If you put it backwards, your bolt at the top will not have enough thread engagement. On the driver's side, all you have is a 22 millimeter nut. Remove that. And the washer. This is actually a long bolt that goes through the steering rack, through the frame, and out the other side. I will not be removing it because we are replacing the passenger side control arm. However, if you're replacing the driver's side, remove it so you can lift this side up. One last bolt in the middle here, which you can't see from the top because it's tucked in behind the steering rack, but you can see the bottom. It's a 19 millimeter socket. Try to sneak a ratchet with a socket in there. Once you get it on, break it free. Okay, this one's pretty tight, so make sure you have a long ratchet. Take this out. Now we can slide the steering rack back a little bit. Just like that. You don't have to go very far. The steering shaft and everything is still connected. And you don't have to disconnect it for this job. There's plenty of clearance in there. Okay, perfect. Now we can, now we have plenty of space here to work with this bolt. To gain access to the front bolt for this lower control arm, we have to remove this skid shield that's in the way. You have three bolts at the front. Technically, mine only has two because this one's missing, and two at the back. Mine are 13 millimeter in size. Yours are most likely going to be 12 millimeter if they're still the original bolts. Hold this so it doesn't fall. Okay, it's got some hooks on the front, so you want to push it backwards, and then you slide it forward to get it off the hook on the back, set this aside. You don't have to remove this skid shield, but I will just because it'll open up the area a lot more. <laughs> okay. 
Now it's time to unbolt the control arm off the frame. To do this, we have to actually remove the bolt side. The nut side is locked in place due to the adjustment washer here. So 22 millimeter on the bolt side, and I'm gonna hold the nut just in case it wants to start spinning with a 19 millimeter. Do the same to the rear bolt. Put a little extension on there so I can clear the steering rack. There we go. Now, both of mine came out. However, a lot of times these will rust in here and they'll be stuck in the control arm. In that case, you're gonna have to take a reciprocating saw with a metal blade, cut them here, here, do the same on the other side, and then of course buy yourself new bolts. Make sure they're a high grade bolt. I would recommend buying them from the manufacturer directly. Before I tap these off, these are pretty stuck on here. I wanna take note of which direction they're facing and approximately how they're lined up because this is gonna also be your alignment and you wanna get it as close as possible so that before you get yourself a professional alignment, it'll be as close as possible. That way you don't destroy your tires driving there. So you can either mark it with something or just remember, I'm just gonna remember that they're facing mostly upwards. stuck on this. Now you do the same to any other nuts or adjustment washers that you have stuck on there. Now with those out, I'm going to soak everything in rust penetrant. I already did beforehand, but I'm going to respray it front and back. And then we actually have to tap these sleeves out. They are rusted and these are seized. As I said before, a lot of times the bolts will seize and this is what they seize into. And uh, this is another thing that commonly seizes is the sleeve in the control arm. So, but cutting this will be a lot easier than cutting through this and the bolt. So we'll give this a couple taps with the air hammer. If it doesn't break free, we'll cut it, but hopefully it does. I'm actually gonna go from the back side first. I don't think that did anything. This sleeve is completely seasoned here for us. I'm gonna take a reciprocating saw with a metal blade and just cut it off. I'm gonna come in from the bottom, aiming upwards. And I wanna be careful not to cut into the frame, of course, if I cut into the control arm bushing, that's fine. But now that the frame or the control arm is unbolted off the frame, that actually expands this just a tiny bit enough for this blade to freely fit in here and cut through. So now I cut all sides of these sleeves here. Hopefully you don't have to do that and yours will slide out, but more than likely they'll be stuck. All we have left to do is remove the lower ball joint nut. However, in order to prevent this from falling, I'm just gonna stick this bolt in like this to hold it on the frame so it doesn't fall down. Take the cotter pin off of the lower ball joint. Twenty-four millimeter socket. Remove the nut. Now use a pry bar and pry the control arm off of the ball joint. Um, pry down, and then I'm going to tap with a hammer at the same time. Just pay attention to not damage the boot or the threads. That's exactly why I left this bolt in here. Slide this out, and. Control arm out of here. There it is. 
I have my control arm clamped down in the vise. It's nice and tight. You're going to need it because we're going to air chisel this lip off and I have this new bushing here so I can show you what's happening. It can only come out one way because of this metal lip here. So in order to press it out, we actually have to put a cup here so that the press can press down here and out here, but you have to support it. And the only way you can do that is like I said, by moving this lip out of the way, peening it over so we can get the cup to sit on the control arm, not on anything else. I mean, there isn't anything else here. So take an air chisel and you wanna bend this down and out of the way. As I was peening this edge over this lip, the bushing actually broke free and started sliding out, which in my case, that's great for me. Uh, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. I've had it do that on old bushings too. Clearly this is a newer control arm, but what you can do is if yours doesn't start breaking free is you would just use the bushing press that I will actually use to install it. Or if you have a shop press, you can use that. Whatever it takes to drive this out. You can even use a hammer if you think that it's free enough to be able to be hammered out. I'm gonna continue with my air chisel and just drive it out. Most likely it's the vibrations from chiseling that broke this free. Okay, there you have it. There's the old bushing. Let's press the new one in. Now let's press the new bushing in. I have it set up in my bushing press here. There's a cup on the bottom that's gonna press right on the outer lip of the bushing here. You don't wanna press in the center. And obviously if the cup is too large, it's not gonna do anything. And then at the top, I have a cup that's going to sit here to receive the bushing because it does stick out a little bit past the control arm. So you wanna have some space. You don't wanna put something flat here. Otherwise it'll bottom out before it's actually fully pressed in. Having said that, let's start this in and press it in. You can see the progress here through this little window, which is nice because if it does start going sideways crooked, you definitely wanna correct it and not press any further. If you do press further, it's potentially going to damage the bushing, sometimes even the control arm. Things can bend, especially when you're putting a lot of force and pressure into it. All right, and now let's press it in. This should go nice and smooth. It will be difficult, but it should be smooth. If it's not, it's most likely going crooked and you're gonna wanna correct the situation, whatever yours might be, adjust it and uh, start over. I'm gonna go until it bottoms out. Okay, that just got really snug right there. I know you can't see it anymore. I'm going to spin it backwards a little bit so you can see it. There we go. It has pressed through. I'm going to, now that it's loosened up, I'm going to give it one more turn to put some pressure on it, make sure it's actually bottomed out. Also, I'm going to look at the bottom here and this lip should be pretty much right up against the control arm, which it is. So let's get our bushing press off of here. Okay. Pull this off and there's the bushing. Inspect it once again. And at this point you do the same to the other side bushing and of course to the other side of the vehicle. I cleaned up the mounting area on the frame here. If you have a lot of rust buildup or debris, old grease, whatever, clean it up so that the control arm can slide in nice and easy. I also greased it up, not only so that it doesn't rust, but this will also help the control arm slide in a lot easier. Now grab your new control arm, slide it up. I have one bolt in my hand and even though I'm not installing it completely, I'm going to put it in so I can hold the control arm up for me. Before I put the sleeve in, I'm going to add a little bit of grease to this. Now the bolts I have, I have new bolts. They are greasable. I'll show you later what that means, but I still like to add grease all over that way in case they don't get fully greased. It is um, not going to seize in the future. So this sleeve doesn't go through all the way. It stops right here. 
make sure it's even on both sides. The new bolt has this grease fitting here, which we're gonna add later and pump some grease into it. But again, just like before, I like to add a little thin layer of grease. This is silicone paste, but really anything that's gonna prevent it from seizing, even anti-seize will do just fine. However, before we slide the bolt in, don't forget to put this washer on which adjusts the alignment. It's cut at the bottom flat here so that it lines up with the bolt. Slide the bolt through. Just a note, when I put grease on, I avoided the threads. You don't want grease on these threads. You just want it on the shank of the bolt. Put this washer on and then the nut on the other side. I'm not tightening anything yet. In fact, I'm not tightening anything until the suspension is at ride height. I don't wanna put the bushings at a bind by tightening them up at the wrong angle. Having said that, let's move to the rear bolt. So pull this bolt back out. This one was in here just to hold the control arm. Add some grease. Slide the sleeve in, make sure it's centered. The bolt, I grease it up. I put this uh, adjustment washer on it, slide it through. Slide it through all the way. Put this on the other side, as well as the mounting nut. Try to line the ball joint up. Okay. Put the nut on, let's snug it up, and then we'll torque it. 80 foot-pounds is the torque for this. This is torqued, but we need to line up the cotter pin slot with the hole in the stud, which actually mine lines up perfectly. If yours doesn't, always continue tightening to line it up and not loosen. Now get a new cotter pin. I don't recommend reusing your old ones and we'll bend it over to lock it in. At this point, I'm gonna put a pole jack underneath and lift up the lower control arm. I know the strut is still disconnected, but that actually might give us a little easier of a time lifting this control arm up to ride height. There we go. Now let's tighten up the control arm bushings with this at ride height. If you don't put it at ride height, it'll prematurely wear these bushings. It'll put a lot of extra tension on them. If you have new bolts, hold the head of the bolt with a 24 millimeter wrench and put a 24 socket on the nut side and tighten these up. Before you fully tighten it, make sure that it's sitting exactly where it needs to be. Okay, we'll torque it in a minute. Let's do the rear one. Now let's tighten the rear one, hold the bolt, and tighten up the nut side. Torque the nut side. 96 foot pounds is the torque for both of these. That's one. Let's do the other one. Perfect. Obviously, you'll still need an alignment, but this got us very close. Now release pressure off of this. Let's get the sway bar link back in. Put it in from the bottom into the sway bar. Make sure you still have this washer and the bushing here while it's still loose at the top. Push it down into the control arm. Put the top rubber piece on and then the washer. Of course, don't forget about the mounting nut. Okay, start the lower mounting nut as well. Now let's tighten both of them up. Tighten up the top nut. You only want to tighten it until these bushings start squeezing a little bit. Don't completely crush them or bottom out the nut because that will prematurely wear these bushings. Right there is good. Tighten up the bottom. 59 foot-pounds for this bottom nut. That's torqued right there. For the top one, there's no torque. You just make it nice and snug. Now we have to line up the bottom of the strut with the control arm. You can either pull down on this if you have enough strength or you can stick a pry bar at the top of the strut. 
pry the whole control arm down as you push the strut in because the bolt needs to come in from the back side and it's more difficult to get that to line up and do this at the same time. I'm gonna use this 3 8 extension, push the strut in, stick the extension in through the hole from the front, and then as I put the bolt in from the back side, this is already lined up and I can tap the bolt in and that'll push the extension out. Oh, let's grab a pry bar underneath. Put the washer on and the mounting nut. Let's tighten this up and torque them to 101 foot-pounds. Let's raise this up to approximately right height so that this bushing isn't bound up. 19 millimeter socket, 101 foot-pounds. That's it right there. Take pressure off your control arm. If you have greasable bolts like us, go ahead and put the grease fitting in. If you reuse your original bolts, you should have already greased them. Same with new bolts that do not come with a grease fitting. Use a seven millimeter wrench, make this nice and snug. And now let's get the grease gun and pump some grease into this. Just pump some grease into it until you feel like it's full. The way to know that it's full is it should come out the backside Wipe it off and then do the same to the front one or whichever one you haven't done yet. Now let's put the steering rack back. I like to put a little silicone paste on this bushing here. That will help the clamp slide on a lot better, or the, the bracket I should say. Just on the top and on the bottom, make sure you get the sides too. Let's put the bracket in. Again, the shorter sleeve goes on the top, the longer sleeve goes on the bottom on the stud here. Line up the bushing, pull the steering rack down slightly. And I'm not gonna worry about the top bolt yet. I just wanna get this to slide in. There we go, the silicone paste did its job and it let us slide this all the way in with minimal effort. Push it. On the driver's side, let's line up the big bolt. Okay. Let's put all the mounting hardware on, the bolt at the top. The mounting nut here, not going to tighten it yet, just in case I need to move it to line up the other ones. On the driver's side, put the washer on, and then the mounting nut. There we go. Now let's put the one in the middle that goes top to bottom. Now let's put this one in, make sure the threads line up. They do. Thread it in by hand as much as you can, and then we'll bottom them all out and torque them. Let's bottom these two out. These were the 19 millimeter fasteners. And this one over here. This is the 22 millimeter nut. Okay, that one's snug. The torque for this one, which is the one you're supposed to torque first, is actually 123 foot-pounds. However, there is no way I can get my torque wrench up there, so I'm just gonna use my long ratchet. If you don't have that, you can just use a breaker bar. Try to tighten it up as much as you can. All right, that's tight. This one also gets torqued to 123 foot-pounds. I have a wrench, 22 millimeter, on the head of the bolt. There's a bolt, like I said, that goes all the way through the frame here. That's it right there. 96 foot pounds for the fasteners for this bracket. That's one. And that's two. Let's put the rear skid plate on. Put this one in, it'll hold it for me so I can line up this side. Put the bolt in, tighten it up. When you put this front one in, make sure you hook it onto the rear shield. And then up at the front here, on the uh, lower radiator support, the 
two shorter bolts go up at the front into the radiator support. And then the two longer bolts go back here that clamp the two shields together. Tighten them all up. and then we'll torque them to 76 foot-pounds. There you go. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.